Hi guys, it's Rafael here from LondonApp.com and I'm going to be talking about the seven things that you should do when you move into a new flat share. Okay, so the first one that I think you should be doing is to get to know your um, flatmates but showing that you know something about the country where they are from. Everybody is very proud from where they are from. So um, I'll tell you a story. Um, when I meet people from Poland, for example, I always tell them how cool their Christmas is. I spent Christmas in Poland in 2003 and I thought it was very um, traditional. The way that they go to the market the day before, they actually choose a carp, a fish, which is going to be in the main meal. They start dinner on Christmas Day only when they see the first star in the sky, about 6 or 7 p.m. They have children coming dressed as angels and demons and they sing and people give the children uh, sweets. So it, it's quite cool uh, that, you know, when you meet people, you show that you, you know something about their country. They will feel very special if you do that, okay? Number two... Um, the second tip that I think you should, you know, something that you should be doing is uh, cooking a meal for your flatmates, okay? Especially if you just moved in, if you are from a different country, cooking them a meal will show that you want to get to know them, you are thoughtful, you are respectful, okay? So I think it really gets people together around the table and um, we will have lots to talk about. Food will be something that will bring you guys together. Number three is um, obviously invite them for a drink. Um, you need to know if your flight mate drinks, obviously. If it, the, your flight mate is Muslim and doesn't drink alcohol, you can invite them for a coffee or go to a juice bar, you know, something different that gets out of the house because it will bring different things to talk about and you will get to know your flight mate or your flight mates if you can during different days, you know, if you have more than one flight mate. But it will help to develop the friendship. Um, number four, it's to talk about the house rules. Um, sometimes people don't talk about it, but I think they should be asking, you know, what uh, are the house rules? You know, what time people have showers? What time people cook? Do people work in different shifts? Do people like watching TV at a certain time? Do you get together? Can you bring people home? Can you bring partners home? How many nights? You know, all those things that you may be thinking, well, but it's my house as well. But remember, it is that, you know, it will be your home that you're going to be there. You're paying rent and, you know, you're sharing with these people. But there is a, a limitation there on what you can do that won't annoy, won't bother your flatmate. So having that little bit uh, uh, thought and respect, it will make sure that, you know, you live in peace with your flatmates. Um, number five, I think it should be uh, that you fully understand your flatmates. I'll tell you a very funny story. When I first moved to, to London, um, I had an English friend and I didn't know the expression good for you. In English, when you do something good, um, you know, people normally say, oh, good for you, you know. So it's, it's kind of praising you, it's giving you good advice. But in Brazil, we have something completely different. We have a very ironic um, expression which is like uh, good for you so obviously not knowing the expression in English I took it personal and I took it very wrong when we were both looking for jobs and I found a job and I texted her to say I found a job and I'm starting on Monday she sent back to me saying good for you so I took it really personal it's like oh she's jealous because I got a job so I kind of went cold and one day she asked me why I had a change with her and I explained and then she starts laughing. She said, no, in English it means completely different. It means good for you. It means something nice. So is my advice there is make sure that you fully understand. You know, if you, I don't, if maybe if you were uh, Spanish moving to Italy and you're learning Italian, you know, whatever country you're going to and you are learning the language, make sure that you fully understand that because there, are, there will be misunderstandings there if you don't ask. Okay. Number six is do clean up after yourself. We just have a blog talking about the dishes, which is a huge issue in shared houses, okay? But if you do clean up after yourself, you will learn that um, things will be easier at home. If you have a shower or if you have a bath, you know, rinse the bath. 
If you brush your teeth, make sure there is no toothpaste left there. It is annoying. People will get bothered, bothered about that. So make sure that everything you do, don't clutter the living room with all your bags and shoes. You know, the living room is not an extension of your bedroom. You've always been thinking, but this is my house too. But, you know, the common areas are not uh, uh, just an extension of your bedroom. You know, as I said, there are limitations there and you need to learn to respect those lim limitations, okay? Number seven uh, is give your flatmate some space. Uh, this is very important. Sometimes your flatmate is watching TV and your flatmate doesn't want to be talking to you. You want to pay attention to what the TV is saying. So you need to learn to respect that time where the flatmate is online talking to a friend, you know, it is in the living room, but doesn't want to be communicating, you know, you need, the flatmate wants to be listening to the TV, but want to keep working, you know, on, on their computer. So you need to learn to balance that where you don't have to be talking all the time, okay? So these are my tips. So the seven tips on what you should be doing when you move into a new flat share. Thanks.